glad you've joined us this morning. If you're joining online, welcome to Tree of Life in Woodenville, Texas. The same God that is here is right there with you. And no matter where you are, he's right there. He's as close as the air you breathe. His breath literally sustains your being. Whether you believe in him or not, his breath sustains your being. So we just come this morning, Lord, we give you freedom. We give you freedom this morning to move and have your way. Begin to give him thanks. Open up your mouth. Open up the gates of your heart. Come on, just open up your mouth. Tell him how much you love him. For all that he's done, all that he's doing. Come on, we come with grateful hearts this morning, with hearts of gratitude.
Father, we thank you that you're in this house today, Lord. We thank you that your word is yes and amen. Your promises, Father God, you fulfill. And the Lord has a word for this house today. I thank you, Lord. I praise you that you have, Father, chosen me as your vessel to speak to your people, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, the Lord says, Hashikati, I am your shepherd. I am your strong tower. I am your king. I am on my throne. I have not abdicated my throne. I have not gone anywhere. I am with you. I surround you. I see you. I speak to you. I comfort you. I have made a way for you. Now this day is the day when I, the one who looses and who, who binds, the one who opens doors and shuts doors, I am the one this day who has bound the spirit of fear. And I have put the spirit of fear back into its corral. And I have locked the door. Now this day, I challenge you, my people, my children, this day, what choice will you make? Will you choose to serve the spirit of fear, or will you choose to, to uh, will you choose to honor and follow me? There is something in that. If you'll remember, I forget if it's Pavlov's law, where we're trained, we've been trained for so long to walk in fear. We've been trained for so long to follow and just follow, blindly follow. And the Lord said, I have broken that off of you today. It is no longer there. Now what he needs us to do is he needs us to acknowledge it's not there anymore. Do not take a step in the usual way, the way that you have come, the way you have been walking for the past two years under this COVID. He wants us to turn now and to choose him and the freedom he's given us for you will no longer walk in fear if this day you choose to step in freedom. So this morning we have a new song, and if you can put the first verse up there. Um, when I saw the first verse, the first line didn't make sense to me. I won't be discouraged, even when I'm discouraged. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. But then the doctor reminded me, hey, remember, or the Lord reminded me, remember when the doctor gave you a bad report? Discouragement came to you but I didn't have to be discouraged. And it says, I'll remind my soul of all you've done before. And then the Lord brought to me Psalm 42, where it says, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Believe in God. And I thought about that, and I was like, yeah. And I was praying about it, and God said to me, in this day and age, you don't have a different version of me. I'm still God. More people may know about me, but you aren't getting a diluted version of God. I am still the same God who splits the sea. I'm still the same God who makes money appear in a fish's mouth. I provide. I'm not diluted. I am just as powerful. And this morning, that's what we want to remember. We, we are told to encourage yourself in the Lord.
are worthy because you are the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Lord, you are the one that is the great I am. That, Father, you are the redeemer, you are the healer, you are the restorer, and you are the one that sets us free. And we thank you for that today. Great and mighty is our God. Great and triumphant is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we thank you for that today, Lord. We come into your presence and we honor you. We honor you, Father, for your great and mighty faithfulness. Honor you because of who you are. That, Father, you're the same God that yesterday, today, and forever, and you change not. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you are the sure foundation of our lives and of our faith. And we thank you for that today. And so, Father, I come to you and I, I thank you for each and per person that is represented here today, Lord, that is standing and believing for you to move on their behalf, Father. And so, Father, I stand with those today that are believing, Father, for financial things to be met in their life. Father, I thank you that you are a God that supplies all our needs according to your riches in glory. Father, I thank you for those, Lord, and I stand with them today that are standing and believing you for healing in their bodies. I thank you, Father, that it's by your stripes that we are healed here today, and we thank you for that. Father, for those that are downcast or dealing with depression or heaviness, we thank you, Father, that the, to the joy of the Lord that is our strength, Father, that we can embrace you and trust you, Father, to move on our behalf and to do great and mighty things. And we thank you, Father, for those even who are calling upon your name to be saved, that, Lord, you would hear them and you would save them and deliver them and set them free. We honor you and we love you for that today, Lord. You're the great I am, and we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? He's a good God. He's a faithful God. He is good towards us. You may be seated this morning and thank you for being with us and we welcome you, those that are online. We're glad that you um, being, have been a part of our service in one way or another. Amen. It's good to fellowship and to be in the house of the Lord. I am... Um, I really believe that God's speaking to us today about um, his faithfulness and how good he's been. And uh, I wanted to read out of uh, Psalms 145, and it says, They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men God's mighty deeds and glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. Amen. Isn't God good that his mercy and his word and everything he is is through all generations? I love it when we talk about generations because God loves working in generation from generation. Amen. And um, I really, we went... Um, our prayer this morning in prayer partners meeting and um, we were just talking about praying for people and I was thinking about the amazing things that God has done on each and every one of our behalf. Amen. Isn't it good to be reminded that we need to be thankful and talk about the glory and the kingdom of God. Amen. It, it's amazing that we don't, um, you know, I don't live a life that is like a pie, that each slice has its certain identity or its way. You know, when I'm at work, this is all work. When I'm here at school, this is all school. When I'm home, this is all home. My pie is just totally a mashed up pie with Jesus everywhere. Amen. And that's the way it's got to be, that we are always there displaying the glory and the wonders of our God. So I wanted to remind you this, this morning that God's glories are everlasting, his miracles are everlasting, and let's be reminded what good things that God has done for us. Amen? He saved us. Amen? Who's been saved? Amen. He's saved. He's raised us up and he's put our feet upon the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Let's not forget that. Amen? He's healed us. He's delivered us. He's provided for us. He's worked mightily on our behalf. And so I'm encouraging you today to do not forget to speak that out. 
Amen? Because your testimony defeats the work of the enemy, number one, and it displays the glorious nature of who our God is. And I don't know about you, but I have lots to be thankful for in my life. Amen? I don't know where I'd be without God. Well, I know where I'd be, and I don't want to be there. I mean, I don't want to be there. And so I'm grateful that. And his kingdom is everlasting and his dominion will reign forevermore. So I'm encouraging you today that declare the miracles that God's done in, on your behalf, the things he's moved. And, and sometimes I just have to remind myself even the things I have not seen that God has done on my behalf. Amen. He's intervened. He has his ministering angels working on my behalf. And it's a good thing walking with the Lord, isn't it? It's a good thing. And um, when you taste and see that the Lord is good, it is good. And he is there through thick and thin, and he is faithful. So let's not forget to declare that and to let people know. In the Old Testament, they build altars of remembrance. We're the ones building altars of remembrance now with our words and our testimonies. Amen. So build those all around you and testify. You don't have to be weird about it. You can just be a shining example of who God is. And when things happen, you can say, well, you know, I trusted God for that. Let's see if he can do that for you. You know, it's easy displaying God when you walk with him and his whole, his, your whole power, not just slices. Amen. So be encouraged to share who God is and what he has done for you on your behalf. And you'll see him work great and mighty things on your behalf. Amen. Well, like I said, it's good to have everybody. If you're a first-time guest, we welcome you. Uh, we have a gift for you that Miss Leslie has right here, if you want to wave. And she would love to share that with you after service. But thank you for being here. And there's also an information sheet that you can fill out. We'd just like to send you a letter Thank you for being with us today. And then if you're online, there's a Get Connected button that you can go to on our webpage and give us your info, and we'll be glad to connect with you in whatever way you may need. All right, we have a few announcements I want to highlight very quickly today. I heard that the Shepherd Hearts Ministry yesterday outreach went great. So thank you for participating and helping in that. Yes, it was a great ministry. Thank you. And... Um, you make a difference. You can make a difference. Handing out groceries. Amen. That's where you let your light shine. So thank you for that. Also, um, Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, we're not having service. There's no service here Wednesday night. But there is still Gohi meeting here at 7 o'clock. And then the following week on March 2nd, we're going to be starting a series here at the church. We're pretty excited about it. It's, um, it's called Kingdom Marriage. It's on marriage. So if you're married or you're thinking about married or being married or you know married people who may need some ministry, this is the place to be, okay? Come and join us. It's by Tony Evans, and it's going to be a series. It's very good. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, light snacks will be provided right before, and then we'll go into DVD and child care is provided for children 10 and under, okay? Today, ushers and greeters are meeting right after service. If you're interested in doing that, greeting or ushering, or you are a part of that, please meet right after service today. They're going to be upstairs in the children's room, and Miss Joey's going to be doing that for us. We need some new people to get involved in this ministry, so come and be a part of it if you can. It's like once a month you greet. It's easy. It's good, but it's you are the one that embraces people coming in, and then our ushers are a great, tremendous help too. So right after service today... Have some lunch. I believe they're having chicken, and um, they will be meeting and fellowshipping. And then also Youth Fiesta Game Night is coming up Saturday, 26th, this Saturday, right here at the church. All the youth are invited for a Fiesta Game Show Night. If you have any questions, please see Trey or Shay, and they'll be glad to fill you in with all that. And then our book club is meeting. It's March 8th at Miss Audra's home. We'd love to have you come join us if you can. And uh, thank you so much for giving. If anybody is uh, giving online, uh, you can go to our webpage and there's a giving tab. It's very easy. Thank you for those that have been faithful giving online. And we really, really appreciate that. 
and there should be envelopes being handed out right now if you would do that. And um, while that's happening, we're going to show a quick uh, DVD promotion that um, we have for you this morning that's part of Miss Emma's ministry. And she wanted to share that with you on what's happening. So let's go ahead and run that video. And then right after that, um, we'll let Pastor come up and share with us. Thank you. All right, now, when, when's the, uh, the, the time again for this? Let me give you a share. Yes, yeah, so you can share that. Well, I wanted to invite each one of you to come to this event. It really is going to be an awesome event. You know, you talk about dance, and a lot, in, even in the Bible, it's over 20 uh, scriptures in the Bible that talks about dance, and it's an expression of heaven. And these ladies that have finished this course, it was a 12-month 12 12 course, and the, it's like Esther. The first six months, the Lord had to get them ready to be vessels of carriers of his glory. Glory. And then the sec the last six months was them to express what they was hearing from heaven in movement. And you know, in in uh, in the Word of God, it says that the angels was commanded to worship and praise the Lord. And even uh, where it talks about the the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and was was uh, uh, trying to rebuke about the movement of dance, but. God gave us an expression. I mean, we are vessels to express a heavenly expression. And so that's what you would ex going to experience if, if you come and, and uh, uh, witness with, uh, the, the dancers. And they're a they beautiful, uh, I call them beautiful butterflies because they was in a cocoon. And now God says, our scripture was in Timothy, that once the latter is ended, then they become vessels of honor, fitted for the master's use. And so that's what you would experience uh, when you come to this event to see how they display what heaven is saying prophetically and demonstrate it in movement on earth. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, this coming Saturday, and you have to go and register online. Um, and if, with that, we are having a brunch, this dinner. You'll have dinner, and it's a program, and we have worship. And then you will see the testimonies of them, uh, how God prophetically gave them a movement from heaven to, to express on earth what heaven's saying through movement. Come, yeah, you can come see me. Saturday about 4 or 5? All right, great. All right, if the youth have not been dismissed yet, you're dismissed officially. All the youth people as well. God bless you folks as well. We're going to get you youth involved. Uh, you know, Emma was calling us this week and talking to us about something I'm very, very excited about as well, and that is getting uh, our younger generation involved in prayer. Um, there's so many people again in our nation that are under 30 years of age that have never been trained how to pray. Um, you know, the disciples, they asked Jesus Christ point blank, Teach us to pray as John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray. Uh, so there's actually, there's actually in the Jewish culture, the Lord's Prayer is actually just a simple outline of prayer. You don't pray the Lord's Prayer and that covers everything that you need to cover. It's an outline, it's a bone structure that you add meat onto, and then everything is covered that you have uh, to do with on the earth and your family and so forth by the Lord's Prayer being prayed as you fill in the blanks uh, from that. So we're going to start doing that on Thursdays. In a couple of weeks here, uh, through March, probably right after spring break is over, um, we're going to start doing that for five solid weeks from 6 to 7. 
Uh, we'll be, uh, all you parents right now, think about that. It's going to be inconvenient. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable to change your schedule. But if you can do that, get your youth here at 6, six o'clock, children, and, of course, yourselves as well, adults. All ages are invited here. Emma will talk for about five or ten minutes about some instruction, some teaching, and then we'll pray from six to seven. The whole thing lasts for one hour, teaching, prayer, and so forth. Because how many folks realize our nation needs prayer, but our nation also needs the next generation to know how to pray. So I've told you again that as I go across this country, as I've seen the churches around the nation and so forth, um, there's very few folks under 30 who go to any prayer meetings at all. And they've not been taught how to pray. They've not been exposed to prayer. A lot of them haven't seen what prayer does. And I believe Tree of Life Church is a place where we've seen what prayer does. You know, as we had people come to the front here two weeks ago and started rebuking things and praying for folks up here, uh, one young lady here called us last week and said, I, I had an, an issue of blood for how long? Uh, for something for like a, a year or so, God totally healed it. It's gone. It's totally, I'm totally set free from that. And I pray other, other, other folks here that were, we prayed for, I'm sure, got touched. Healings took place. Let us know about those things as well. Uh, give us that feedback. But God is still healing today. But God's also still saving. He's still transforming lives. He's still intervening in governments. He's still raising up the, un, the godly and bringing down the ungodly if his people pray. God does that. So um, before our guest speaker comes today, I want to also honor all those having birthdays this week coming up. Um, Sylvia Castor, are you here today? If you're here, is wave. She's probably watching online. She's one that we had the um, service for her mother this last week here. But as I prayed about Sylvia, I received Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 7. It says, a time to tear and a time to sow. I really believe that for Sylvia, God's going to give you a year coming up here. We're going to start seeing some things that were torn apart, start getting mended back together and sewn back by God's needle, God's thread, better than it was before. Amen. Uh, in the McMurray family, this David's having a birthday this week coming up here. Tell David, uh, give him uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 8. I am sending him to you to know um, your circumstances and to comfort your heart. This is talking about a charge that Timothy being sent there to comfort folks' heart, to give them uh, counsel. I really believe that God's given David a counseling anointing and an ability to comfort people. And so just be aware that this coming year here, God's going to give him opportunities at his, at his campus where he's at, workplace, whatever, there to comfort people, counsel people, because that spirit's on him, and God wants to use that. And then Don Gish, watching online as well, lives out there in Lakeway. If you're watching Don, uh, 2 Samuel chapter uh, 11, verse 8, it says, Go to your house, wash your feet, and as he went, a gift of food from the king followed him. This is a story here about, of course, a king telling someone to go to the serving him. But the whole thing talks about servanthood. But I believe uh, the Spirit of God is telling me for you, Don, that as you're serving people and serving God, you're going to start seeing handfuls of blessings following you from the king. There's going to be something prepared for you in advance that's going to surprise you that God's going to bless you with. As you're sowing into God's kingdom, he's going to outgive what you do. And God's going to bless that in good ways. Amen. Anybody else having a birthday today or this week coming up? Would you kind of wave at me if I missed any birthday folks? All right. As far as anniversaries go, our drummer, who's probably out there because of an anniversary, is Johnny and Priscilla, his wife. I'm not sure what number it is for them. We may ask them that next week. Their anniversary is this week coming up. So anybody else having a wedding anniversary? All right. Let's pray blessings right now upon these birthday folks. Let's ask God to bless their lives and also Johnny and Priscilla as well. So Father, we do thank you for those of God who have birthdays this week, we mentioned, we say that the word of God for them is yes and amen. May it surely, God, come to pass for them. We pray blessings, God, upon their lives. We pray for fruitfulness, Lord, protection, provision, O oh God, your favor be upon them. And we say, God, that you're, uh, there's a fire burning inside of them. There's going to be a strong fire that brings forth, God, a zeal that brings forth a fruit that remains in Jesus' name. We're blessing also, Lord, Johnny and Priscilla. Bless this year, God, of marriage. May it be a strong relationship, God, that grows stronger, deeper, with roots going down deeper and deeper. And let them, God, be a godly example for those they come in contact with who need to see what a Christian marriage is all about. We praise you, God, and thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, our guest, somebody else? Oh, sorry. Offering folks who come to the front here. i got to get back into the mode here. We're doing offerings at this point of the service. Uh, thank you guys again for being faithful here and giving. Um, God is helping us still to do things, to see things happening both here and abroad. While they're up here as well, I want to say thank you to, to Luke Hatley and to Alex also, to Prima. These guys fixed that smashed up um, fence out there that surrounds our dumpster. 
If you want to take a look at that, that's a great craftsmanship thing. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Let's give them a hand. Let's just say, bless you, God. Guys, for doing that and did a great job. It's good to have some folks that when things break here by vandals or whatever, they get fixed. <laughs> Amen. But hopefully no more of that takes place. Let's pray blessings on this offering today as we also pray blessings on you folks. So, Father, we thank you what is sown today. Be used, O oh God, as a blessing for your kingdom. Help us all, God, be wise stewards of what you give us. We praise you, God, your blessings are upon the city of Austin. May you prosper this city more and more. As you prosper the city, God, you prosper us. And as we prosper, we bless others by sowing God into your kingdom, helping the poor, the needy, the missions, all things of God you put upon our mind to sow into. We ask you, God, to bless, bless what is sown. Use it, God, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, ushers. You can wait upon the people as they're doing that. We want to welcome back our good friend, uh, Curtis Baker, no stranger to us. And I appreciate, again, that Curtis is still reaching out to the nations, still touching them by uh, electronics and even overseas. We had a great trip together in Colombia several months ago. And uh, he's going to talk this morning here a little bit also about what God is doing in parts of Asia. And I'm just excited to have him come back. Let's, let's give a good, warm Tree of Life Church welcome to Curtis as he shares today. Well, thank you, Pastor Mike Johnson, my good friend. So good to be here today again with all of you, and I always look forward to it. I always love spending time with Mike and Cheryl Johnson, and they're a great blessing to our lives, our family, and to the church, and, and that's everywhere, not just here. And so it's, it's good to be in service with all of you today, and the presence of the Lord is here. Such an uplifting and refreshing time of praise and worship, and uh, thanks to everybody for leading us into the presence of God. I have enjoyed uh, every encouraging word and word from the Holy Spirit that has been spoken already this morning here with us, and a lot of confirmation in that for me that God is going to say some good things to us today. Praise the Lord. We are, are coming out. We're coming up and we're coming out of some things. And uh, I was reminded yesterday of a, a time of, a few years ago, it was the fall of the year 2018. I was in the northern part of the country, Myanmar. Um, the U.S. still recognizes as Burma which is a country in a dire strait today, but God is still working in, in uh, some very, very wonderful ways to help the Christians and the churches there. But I was there fall of 2018 in the north central part of the country, and um, we were having a, a conference for leaders, uh, a lot of pastors there, plus some Bible school students and others. And I was uh, speaking there one night Holy Spirit began to stir some things in me, and I began to prophesy, and I was confident in the Word. Boldness was really uh, strong, and I began to share with them that this is not a time or a time that we're coming into for holding back, for turning back for fear or turning back for self-preservation, or to hold on to the seed rather than to sow it because God is with us, um, that if the light seems like it's beginning to dim, don't despair over these things or go into hiding because the eclipse is always moving. It's never total, and it's only darkest for a moment, and then the light begins to reappear. This was recorded. I still have the recording of that. And then going further, I said to them, here at the back of this room, we have Bible school students. This was on that night, not here right now. They said there is a great revival of salvation that is coming to this Buddhist nation, less than 5% Christian today. But we are believing God for this and for many other nations in, Israel, in Asia on the Asian continent. That this revival of salvation is coming and that my generation will not lead this revival. But this young generation that is at the back of this room, many of those Bible students very young, they are going 
to raise up and train the generation that is going to lead this revival that is coming to the earth. There is nothing that we say or do today, not a prayer that we pray, not a praise song that we sing, not any time that we spend loving and serving the Lord by loving and serving one another that goes for nothing. But it matters. We are walking in the light and pushing back the powers of darkness every step, every prayer, every song. Somebody say amen. It's always for something in the name of the Lord and by the goodness of God. And so we are going on and we are pressing on. I have uh, some photos. I th- are we able to take a look at those today? And if they'll come up. Uh, I was just talking about the country of Myanmar. I'm going to take us just in the next few minutes to about three different places in Asia. We have had uh, times here in America and in other Western nations where we have been inconvenienced. We've been shut down. We have uh, felt pressure against the church and our faith, but also personally in our lives, and we're looking to overcome and come out of this, and we are in Jesus' name. In Myanmar, we are still active there. We have established through, we we, we operate under the name Hallelujah International Ministry in Myanmar and among the Burmese-speaking people. This is our Bible training center that is in Yangon. God has helped us to uh, purchase some property there. A wall has been built around there. And a multi-purpose center is going to be built there. This is in Singapore, one of our Hallelujah International congregations there. And uh, some pastors that came from different countries. This is an example of one of our... I think actually this was the poster of the meeting that I was just talking about where that prophetic word came that I was just referring to. So this is a picture of that. As we go forward with the photos that uh, uh, in Myanmar since 2010, being introduced to that place, God has allowed us to connect with some great leaders. Our ministry of Visionaries International operates with this mission, and that is to help the helpers who are in Christian service around the world. Those are people who are serving others for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ. And this is why the training of leaders is a priority for this. Pastors, evangelists, children's workers in Myanmar today, and I'm always glad to be with Brother Jack. We've got to continue to help those children's homes that are raising up a new generation of Christians in the country. This is my son Caleb at a school in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, which is actually, by the help of God, funded by the United Nations. But in this Christian school where they have chapel every day and they teach English and teach the Bible, there are refugee children out of Myanmar is how this began. These are Chinese Christians and a network of Chinese pastors who oversee this ministry and we have partnered with them. Also in this group of children, there are the children of refugee families out of Syria. They go to Malaysia because Malaysia is a Muslim country like Indonesia, but Those Syrian Muslim refugee families are lining up to get their children in this school. And they don't know why. But thank God, and this is some of the young leaders there, this Chinese Malaysian people are being used by God in some powerful ways. And they are also going across into China. And this same network, the Life Harvest Chinese Leadership Group and this, uh, seated to my right there, is leader, Pastor Ray Yap. Um, we are also doing ministry in a uh, total now of six other countries besides China. And we have gone into Bangladesh. And Pastor Mike and I have been with Pastor Raymond in the Philippines, where we are working with groups of people there that have a, uh, a background, a heritage that is Filipino-Chinese. And so it's, it's obvious. This is leaders in the country of Bangladesh. Powerful people right here. And in the Bangladesh, God is helping us through a training center that we've established there. We have been, this is a water baptism service, where that at this water baptism service, there were police who came up who were Hindus who wanted to know what was going on and tried to stop it. And uh, some of the young pastors tried to hide me from them. And I said, take me to them, I want to talk to them. And I went and had a conversation with them and I said, we are Christians 
And we are having a special get-together. And when we do this, we baptize one another. And I know it looks odd, but this is what we are doing. And they thought that was funny. They laughed at it. And I said, yes, but when we baptize one another, the power of Jesus takes over in our lives. And this is our testimony that we love Jesus Christ. And, and rather than shut it down, they wanted to stay and watch. And they wanted photos with me and things. God will help you. And God will give you favor times when you need it most. These are children in a boy's home in uh, a region called Yashur. This is one of the Christian schools. The young couples that we are training there in Bangladesh, they're going back into their Muslim villages. And they're establishing what they call international schools. They're learning the English alphabet and how to count by numbers. And they take these very meager skills and they go back and they start schools. First of all, outside on the ground. And the Muslim families want their children to learn English. And so they enroll them in these schools and they're also receiving the Word of God. For about $1,500 to $2,000, we can build then a small building that is concrete, wood, and with a tin roof. And this is, first of all, a school for the children. They can come in out of the weather, but then eventually it holds the church services because churches, Christian churches are starting out of this kind of outreach. In Bangladesh, uh, there's been a total shutdown in the country. This is in the capital city of Dhaka. This is a midnight prayer service in a Muslim women's beauty salon where that on Sunday night at midnight... They transform it. The women take off their burqas. They dress up in colorful clothes. And we have a Christian worship service. It's one of the greatest ministries I've ever seen in my life. From Bangladesh, we moved to India. In Bangalore, India, up in the top right-hand photo, that preacher right there, his name is Peter Paul Arkisiyami. He is trained at Christ for the Nations Institute. He went home with his American wife, back to India. You may not know this, but Christian missionaries cannot go into India for that purpose. It has been outlawed for many years. Currently in India, the prime minister is in favor of legislation that is going to shut down Christian house churches and make it illegal for Christians to evangelize and convert Hindus or Muslims to Christianity. This is on the verge of being passed. We're praying that it will not be. In addition to very, very difficult shutdown of the country, as in Myanmar, and this is on the top floor of the house where we have two apartments and where the music school, when Peter and Jillian went back to India three years ago, there were several things we tried that didn't work, and then God gave a vision to start a music school. And all of the families in the neighborhood wanted their children to learn to play the guitar and some notes on a piano keyboard. And they started coming, and through these children now have more than 40 families that are participating in worship services and Bible studies. And in this year, we are believing God to do $100,000 worth of construction in Asia. In Myanmar, we're going to put up the first part of the training center in Yangon. Here on the top of this house, we're going to build a third floor worship center. Right now, they're meeting up there and, and they have not even a, a, any kind of a guardrail uh, off the edges of the roof there. They're doing this. These are some of the students in music school. And before they get into their music studies, they have been drawing a picture here uh, that was assigned to them or coloring or something from their Bible study. Peter and Jillian are doing a great job there and they're living there full time. And we are so excited about what God's doing with them. These are some in, 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 in Bangladesh, a lot of the things we've been able to do over the last two years of this pandemic have been feeding people. But... We send help that goes out to the pastors, and then they send back reports about how many other people that they fed. And maybe they're taking up even 12 baskets of leftovers. I don't know. But if God did it once, can He do it again? Yes, He can do it again. Thank you for going with us, for praying with us, for standing with us, and thank you for helping me with those photos today. I want to go back to the country of Myanmar for just a moment. We have just passed the one-year anniversary something's going off on my phone that just means I'm on time. Um, one, we passed a one-year anniversary where the military that is supported by the Chinese government took over. They put the democratically elected government, which were first elected and took their offices back in 2012, 
And after 2012, the changes in the country of Myanmar were absolutely remarkable. Every time back and forth out of the country, things were changing, modernizing. The economy was being uplifted. But even more than that, the freedom and the ability to do ministry and outreach, the church was flourishing in days like never before. And many who had left that country as refugees under the former military government and that dictatorship, they had become Christians in other countries. Uh, by the way, just this past summer in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we had the first summer reunion for our network of Burmese language churches here in America, had 11 churches with their pastors resident there. We're going to bring that reunion to Texas in 2022. But this is an example. They, they went to countries everywhere, but becoming Christians at a higher rate, they began to come home to Myanmar. They were coming back. They were sending. They were going back for short-term missions. Many of them returning, professionally trained, because now there were opportunities that were not there before. Just shortly after our President Biden was inaugurated, the first of 2021, in fact, two days after, the Chinese supported military in Burma, and this has flown under the radar. Many people are not even aware of it. They took over the country. They put the elected government leaders in arrest. Today, every hospital is shut down. Every school is shut down. Every government institution is shut down. What is happening? How are the people living? Well, they're living. They, they have been there before. But they have also seen, and the Christian believers have also seen, that God has delivered them before. And God has changed it. This eclipse is moving. The, the darkness lasts but for just a moment and it begins to shine again. God is the answer. This is happening because of Christian ministry and for no other reason. It is not because of anything having to do with Buddhism, having to do with China, having to do with that government the devil is trying to have his way. But God is going to do something to show himself powerful in Asia. Asia is important. I have two things to say, and then I believe I have a word from God today for us here that uh, I'd like to say about why Asia. And the first is the people who are living in Asia today. On the American continents combined, North and South America, just passing a billion in population. The continent of Africa, the same thing, just passing a billion in population. The European continent, the same thing. On the continent of Asia, passing 4 billion in population. Those who are alive today need Jesus. The vast majority of them have never heard who Jesus Christ is. They know nothing about the truth of Jesus Christ. More and more they know CNN. In so many places in Asia, I am asking about CNN. And if, if America is a Christian nation, how could this happen? Why do you have this problem? Why is that going on? And I try to explain to them, well, in America, we have this thing called freedom of speech. And we have this other thing called freedom of the press. And you can say it even if it's not true. And it's hard to understand. But don't believe everything you hear. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He will help you to understand truth. He, ha he will supply to you gifts of wisdom and knowledge. And He will give you discernment. Everything that you hear is spiritually driven. It's either driven by the Spirit of God or it is driven by the Spirit of the Antichrist. And that Spirit is prevalent in the earth. And it has been, but we are overcoming yet. For the sake of those that are alive, we must go to Asia and training of leaders, pastors, evangelists, children's workers is the utmost need in doing that. We can't go and reach them all, but we pour into others who are vessels of honor for God, as we are told today. And the expression of godliness and His goodness and His life and His salvation comes out in so many different ways. And the Holy Spirit tunes it all and meshes it all and brings it together. It's a symphony of evangelism and gospel for the glory of God. This is why we go to Asia first. The second is, in less than 30 years, the population on the continent of Asia is going to double. Go back to Africa and as an example. In less than 18 years, the continent of Africa is going to be average age under 18. In some African countries today, the average age is approaching 16. I said the average age 
of everybody in the country. What does that tell you? It tells you that half of the population is under that age. That's what that means. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, all of these countries are on the list of the top eight most populated nations on earth. They're also the least Christian nations on earth. But in less than 20 years, the average age in all of these countries I just named will be under 18. That means half of the people who will populate Asia 18 to 20 years from now are not born yet. The number of those who haven't heard Jesus is increasing by the hour. This is why the generations that are following behind us must be the focus. The children are vitally important to this mission. And we cannot but hear this and do something. I, I don't know. Uh, I had never been to Asia until 2010. But today I just have to say the word. My emotions overtake me. But it's not be spared. It's because I know God's doing something there. I thank God I've been able to see it. Amen. Jack, we're blessed. <laughs> we're honored. You know the missionary, Brother Chuck Linhart. Yeah. Do you know who first took him to Myanmar? He lives there today. He's right in the middle of this. Your pastor did. He went with us, I think it was about seven years ago. <laughs> To a backward place that's hard to get to. But God got a hold of him <laughs> in that place. Oh, thank the Lord. God told me 12 years ago, go full time in this. I want you to let me lead you by the Spirit. So this is our first value to be Spirit led. The second thing is I, I, I want you being led by the Spirit to always give your best, whether it's two or two thousand. And don't partner with anybody who's not willing to do the same. Because you don't know the value of this second, this moment, this service, this meeting, this day. I'm speaking to somebody right now who needed a word about this. Your life has meaning. If you want to receive this, that God is going to show you greater meaning and purpose and you're going to shake off some heaviness and some despair about where your life is going, you might stand up right now because there's an anointing in this place. Amen. Somebody wants it. This is happening. Hallelujah. Meaning. Purpose. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You want to know that your days are not passing without reason. God says there's a reason. Every sunrise from this day forward will be confirmation that I'm not finished with you and your greater days have not been lived. Amen. You will never be, more, never, never be more poor than you are in this moment. You will never know less than you know today. You will never have less than you have today. And you will never have less motivation and spiritual vision than you have today. But you're growing in all of these things. If you want to receive it, everybody just give God thanks right now. Spontaneously, out of your heart, glory to God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for purpose. Thank you for vision. Thank you for a sense of mission. Thank you for understanding and discernment by the Spirit. Thank you for an ability to look past the moment and see tomorrow. Thank you for a big picture. Hallelujah. Let's give God thanks right now that He's a big picture God. He's a big picture God. Amen. Don't minimize the moment. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is just shaking me with that again. Be led by the Spirit and give your best no matter who's there, no matter who didn't show up. No matter who didn't bless you, no matter who didn't give the offering, no matter who's not praying for you, <laughs> hey! <laughs> Woo! I've had more doors slammed in my face when I used to go out witnessing. Galveston, Texas, 21-year-old pastor. I knew God sent me there to plant a church. And by the glory of God shining in that place today, there are people living for Jesus who didn't know Him. Back in 1984, I knocked on a door one day. I was desperate. 
A man opened the door. I told him who I was. I said, I'm going around the neighborhood just trying to pray with people who want prayer. Telling you that there's a church here and that we love Jesus if we can ever do anything for you. And he said, hey, I'm watching a preacher on TV. I've been looking at him. i got some questions. Would you come in and watch with me? I walked into his house and he was watching a broadcast by Brother Kenneth Copeland. And he had questions. And we talked about it. I found out later when he drove his new Mercedes Benz up into the, the, the parking lot that held about six cars outside my place there the next Sunday morning and he walked in that he was the president of the Moody National Bank downtown. In four months he was teaching my Sunday morning Bible class. <laughs> He's still a partner in ministry with me today. I walked into the jailhouse one Monday night to do a weekly service down there in the jail. Keno's been down there with me way back <laughs> in the 80s. I walked into the jailhouse. There was a brother in there, dishonorably discharged from the army, busted and taken the whole rap for him and his three brothers who had an old Corvair with a false back seat in it and they would dress up like Catholic priests and drive drugs across the border down at Matamoros. <laughs> he was the youngest brother out of this bunch and he took the whole heat. Well, he had already given his heart to Jesus. God answered prayer and he got out of there. He started to come to church. <laughs> Today he's a millionaire and is still a partner with me. There's nothing I do that he doesn't help me do. <laughs> still in my life. Get some purpose today for this minute, for this conversation, for the next meeting. When you go to work, they don't know it, but the greatest blessing that they could possibly have in their life is when you walk into that place every day. The love of Jesus in your heart and the favor of God on your life, destined for blessing, destined to overcome, destined to live through it and conquer no matter what's in front of you. I haven't read a text yet. Mm. I don't know if I'm going to get to it. I, I just, hey, man. Give your best. <laughs> don't call it small. Don't minimize who you are and what you have. And what God has done through your life in the past. <laughs> when you sow the seed that is in your hand today, what you do is guarantee your harvest tomorrow. And whatever God is doing through you right now, He's also doing something to you because tomorrow He's going to ask you to do something else. Take another step. A step up. A step out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be led by the Holy Spirit and give your best. And then he told me, sow seed like you're never going to run out. <laughs> and so far we haven't. I feel quickened about these things right now. Well, God has reminded me of some things. The year was 2016. It was January. I went to Asia and I was there for three and a half weeks. On the way back on an airplane, I had my notebook out and I was writing down testimonies. Thanking God for what he did. Well, the devil got my ear. And he said, well, yeah, but you know you used every cent you had to go do this mission. And this is just January. You've got 11 more months. All those other things you have planned for the rest of the year, you're not going to be able to do them. You have no money. Well, I started thinking about that. I got home. Maybe some of you have heard this testimony before. I walked in the house. My wife met me. We went home. One of the things she told me when we walked in the door, she said, there's some mail on your desk that I haven't opened. It's a thing of hers. If it just has my name on it, she doesn't open it. I tell her, it's fine. You go ahead. There's nothing hidden. But it's just an honor thing with her. So I, I kept thinking about this broke condition. So the, the ministry was broke. And any time that we use that word or any word like it and discuss well we just don't have we don't have we don't have and we can't well it leads to another word 
that is even emptier and broker and lesser. And we also tend to reflect upon God ways of thinking about ourselves and other people. And nothing about how we are or what we are, how we do things, the way we think, God says, my ways are not yours and my thoughts are not like yours. Amen. This is a big part of the message where that, that I, I felt that I was coming with for you today. So here's some of that, but my thoughts and my ways are higher. Always higher. Amen. Last week, Saturday, a week from yesterday, I was standing in my kitchen with my morning cup of coffee. And the first thing that I heard in my spirit, God said, the race is not to the one who runs the fastest but the one who endures. The race is not to the swift, but the one who endures. And he said, that's what I'm saying over there in Pflugerville at Tree of Life Church. And I began to feed on that, and I began to realize that the enduring one is a synonym of the one who is the overcomer. The saved one. The healed one. By promise, by faith, all of it. The conqueror and the more than the conqueror. In the name of Jesus. The one who has something to say because of the gift in their life. The enduring one is the same as this as long as we take steps by faith and we don't stop where we are and we keep going. Press on through it. I said pressing through it. Amen. Press through it. Through it. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we're coming through. We're coming through and we're coming out. Amen. Then I was standing there and then I heard this song in my spirit. God's way is better than my way. God's way is higher than mine. God's way is better than my way all the time. Yeah, we, we reflect things on God and He's not like us. He wasn't worried at all about my bank account or how I was going to pay for the rest of the year of ministry, much less provide for my house. For three days, I stumbled around in my house trying to pray through that, and then I sat down because my wife said again and again and again, have you opened the mail? I pulled a letter off the top that was from yet another brother who's still in my life that I met in a drug recovery ministry in Maybank, Texas in 2004 is also able to be a big blessing when God tells him to today what a testimony but he had sent me an envelope and inside there he said I was praying for you God said to help you out and I had never in my life cashed a hundred thousand dollar check but I did that day even when I was on the airplane, the devil, <laughs> what an idiot. What a stupid dog fool. I waved that check in the air. Devil, where are you now? What you going to do? Looks like I'm going to be preaching the rest of this year. Looks like I'm going somewhere. Looks like I'm still alive. Looks like I've got another day. Looks like God was way ahead of you. I didn't know it. I admit, I wasn't believing it and I wasn't confessing it. But thank God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, sometime back before that I had. <laughs> and I had sowed the right seed. God said, sow seed like you're never going to run out. And so I tell you, what we, we have learned that if we even feel a, just a, a little bit of a push, of a desire, of a want to, we're writing a check. And I'm talking in that way about my wife and I. Someday maybe God will give me the liberty to share the testimony. But since 2014, we've given away more than we've kept. And it's only by walking in a supernatural ability to do that on a daily basis God asked me do you want to give more than 50% and I said yes I do found out that my wife in her prayer time God had been speaking to her about the very same thing I said well let's ask God how to do it because I don't see how in the world we can 
but he gave us a strategy to begin with. We thought it was for four years, but it's been renewed <laughs> over and over. I don't know if we're ever going to get out of it. It takes a lot of faith. But God is good in that. So those are the things that God put on our heart and what we began to do. I definitely want to read before I'm out of here. From one text in Hebrews chapter 10. I don't even know where I'm at. I don't know if I even finished anything I started. But in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35, Well, I, I know this is, this is the Holy Spirit here. I'm reading, this is the English Standard Version. Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. Reading that again. Do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Amen. Yeah, I see my brother over here I met before church. First time in service here today. Yeah, I hope I'm not running him off. God bless you. Amen. God brought you here. Amen. I don't know where you're going from here. But God is doing something in your life. But what's going on? What's going on? You've been asking that question? God has kind of stepped in. God is very merciful and He's also deliberate and He also answers every prayer. Somebody has prayed for you and you've asked God yourself. He's beginning to answer questions for you and He's beginning to show you some meaning and He's going to show you your race course. Amen. I don't mean to embarrass you or anything. I hope you're not. I love you. And I know everybody here does too. God bless you today. Amen. You have need of endurance. That word is most often translated in the King James Version, patience. Sometimes in English, perseverance. I was going to come here and say that today I am an enduro. I've been in places with Pastor Mike, out of the way, bad roads, hard to get around and he's a motorcycle guy I don't know if you knew that but he'd say it'd be nice to have here a couple of enduro dirt bikes I've heard him say that in the past I was reading this verse the other day and that came to my mind enduro I don't know if this is a, if we were speaking in Spanish we would say I am enduring I think that's taken an English word and meshing it together but this is a Greek word that means literally, also sometimes translated, understand. Understanding. But God gives you a different picture of what it's like to endure. It's not so hard when you know the race that is set before you. Run with patience or with endurance the race that is set before you. Who set it there? God did. Only by the Spirit do you know the way that you should go, and going God's way is better all the time, and you will see it. Lay aside the weights and the sin that does so easily beset or easily entangle. You know what tense that's really written in? Saying that God has already set the course in front of you. If God's in your future, then you ought to be excited about running into tomorrow. Hallelujah, I am. And also this weights or this heaviness of thought and that means taking up worries you can't do anything about and it can't help you lay them aside and the sins the tense this is in is that you have already done this really the way that we should see this in red seeing that you have already laid aside weights of cares and worry and your old sins and you've been set free from them then already keep on running the race that is in front of you, the course having been laid by God. See it and go to it. Be an enduro. This word, to stand under. The picture that I have whenever I see this word, 
different ways it's translated into to English out of the original New Testament language. But to stand under, you get the idea of maybe, you know, a piano that is being delivered to an upstairs, high up floor, but got to go in through the window with it. And it's being supported somehow. But you know that the supports, the tackles, the blocks, the ropes, and the people taking care of it, they know what they're doing and you're so sure that that thing is not going to come down that you just stand right under it. Understanding is literally to stand under. Jesus used this word in John chapter 16 when He said, I want you to bear fruit that remains. Same word. That endures and perseveres and stands under. What that means is if you put your hand to it today, in the name of Jesus, because you believe this is God's way for you, then tomorrow you don't say, well, I, I guess God wasn't with me in that. No. Hold fast. Keep your confidence. This is what I need to leave with you. This word in Hebrews chapter 10. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. Every American in here ought to love this because this confidence means your free speech. Amen. God gave us this right long before there was a great nation called the United States of America with one of the greatest government documents ever been written. I'm thankful for that today, but God's not an American. And God has shared with us as an American something that He gave to us through Jesus long ago. And the Hebrew writer said, You are set free from all of your worries and from all of your sins to speak the truth. So don't ever shut your mouth. Don't ever stop speaking confidently, honestly, and truthfully about who God is and about who you are and about what Jesus has done for you and about where we're going. We're going up and not down. We're going through. We're not stopping where we are. We are called overcomers, conquerors, and more than conquerors through Him who loved us and gave His life for us in Jesus' name. I know you believe these things today. I feel the Holy Spirit quicken me, and so I will repeat. Be led by the Holy Spirit. He's ready to lead you. Give your best in every moment. And don't hold back. And don't think twice about it. And don't regret it. And don't say tomorrow it wasn't right. Now God, I, I leave all of that with you. What's next? Looking up, looking forward. Where are we going now? And you can be this confident to sow the seed that is in your hand like you're never going to run out. Because the God of the seed is also the God of the harvest. And I pray in Jesus' name that He multiply your seed for sowing, that God always supply to you seed to sow and bread to eat, and that your seed be multiplied even in the ground after you have planted it, and that the harvest come in due season. Be strengthened today in the Spirit of the Lord so that you do not faint or become weary in well-doing, because if you sow to the Spirit, you will by the Spirit reap everlasting life in the due season. And this is a due season. It's due. You are due. I am due. In the name of Jesus, we are due. Do hold fast to your confession. Speak freely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Only two times to do it. When you're alone or with somebody. That's what my grandpa used to say. There's only two times to praise God when you feel like it and when you don't. He gets glory every time and the latter will change when you get in the Spirit. It's all up to you, brother and sister. Amen. Would you stand on your feet and give God some praise and glory today? Hallelujah. Join me. Join me. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. He's done great things for you. He's doing great things for you. Pastor, I love you and appreciate you. And thank you for giving me some time today, probably more than was coming my way. Amen. I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Praise God. It's been a, it was a pleasure to travel with, with Curtis and such a a man of faith. That's one thing that God's put in our lives is a lot of faith. You've got to have faith with endurance. And, uh, you know, faith grows. Faith actually increases if you endure. Because God proves himself. So it's like God says, see what I did? Because you endured. Because you had faith. And look, look at what I did. And so praise God. Like you said, you meet people sometimes 20 years ago and there's still fruit coming forth from uh, those, those divine connections. Whatever. People's geographical areas, whatever. We're today we're going to take up, uh, receive an offering, love offering for our brother. If you uh, write a check out today, be generous. Make it out to Tree of Life Church, T-O-L-C, 
We'll make sure all the goes in this offering goes to him. And, um, you know, ministries like this, um, when I was going to Shoreline Christian Center, I was missions pastor was there for, for, I think, for, what, nine years. And um, I told Pastor Rob, I said, I, you got to realize, Pastor Rob, the need is so great in the mission field, in the world. I could drain every bank account in this church at, at Shoreline with 5,000 people, and there still would be many needs left. So what I want to say to you, uh, Brother Rob, is I want to say that I want to come to you sometimes with projects or just say this is a need here. And you can say yes or no. I'll have no offense in my life whatsoever. If you say no, I'm just going to present it to you. You do what you want to do. And um, I'm standing at that to you again today. If you take it so into missions, uh, there's never going to be too much or too little. The main thing is obedience. Do what is obedient. What is God asking you to do? When we're obedient, the need is always met. Whatever God needs to do, what God wants to do, always happens by obedient Christians doing what they should do in obedience. So be generous today. Be obedient. We're going to pray over this ministry, this offering. Father, we thank you for Brother Curtis. We praise you, God, for his life, for his wife, Joe. We praise you, God, for open doors, open heavens, divine provision, divine favor, God, that would increase. And may, Lord, what he said, O oh God, even me come to pass this day that what happens in the next few years will eclipse what took place in the previous years gone by. May you, God, take the foundation laid and build a mighty work upon that. Let it expand, God, to touch the nations. Keep us, O oh God, with him as a church and myself as well, leaders that are here to travel the nations, to uh, bring input to them, to bless their lives in ways that are physical, practical, spiritual, and lasting, Father God. We give praise and thanks for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ushers. We upon the people. Thanks for your 10 extra minutes again today. There's an increase anointing upon Brother Curtis, so he deserves the increase of 10 minutes. Amen. We can give him that. And uh, what else is happening? Oh, yeah, prayer partners. We got our prayer partners going to start coming to the front as well. Um, we want to make sure you have an opportunity here to be prayed for. We're still getting good reports of people getting prayed for. They get prayed for here. These, these altars are what we call the altars. Healing is taking place. Miracles that are happening. Words of knowledge are coming forth. People are getting touched that aren't here that need prayer that you pray for with these folks because the prayer of agreement does avail much. Amen. I want to start a brand new series next Sunday. The Holy Spirit told me to talk about In God We Trust. And I'll be talking to you on things like prayer and things like sowing and reaping and things like uh, inter intercessory warfare and so forth. We'll be in that as well. And, and then I'll be praying about what God wants you to talk about beyond that as well. But the main thing is God is wanting us to trust Him. There's going to be so many things happening around us these last days. It's going to cause a lot of believers to quit trusting in God. God, if, this, if you're trustworthy, then why is this happening? God is always worthy of our trust. Amen. So praise God. Let's go. And, oh, yeah, that's your greater meetings will be upstairs after the service is over here. We're going ahead and let's, let's get um, one of our prayer, prayer partners here. Let's get Patricia Pittman. If you don't mind, if you get the microphone, you can dismiss us in prayer. If you want to talk to Curtis, you can do that after service. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday by faith. Have a great week here. It bear good fruit because God's spirit is in us. Father, we praise you today, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. I just speak deliverance for those that need it today, Lord God. The freedom of your is in this place, and we receive it, Lord God. This word, such a timely word, Lord God that there's not a one here that cannot say that you are not in this place, that you are not a true God, that you are not somebody that doesn't care, but that you are the God that loves each one that died for us. Father, we praise you. We receive your goodness this day. We receive the liberty that we have in you. Lord, we live and move and have our being in you, Lord God. Have your way among us, Lord God. We cry out to you this day, and we are so thankful for loving us lord we just praise you today i speak blessings lord god that this day forward lord god our lives will be free in you we can lord just raise our head up and say that we are your child and that nothing can separate us from your love we praise you lord and we thank you in christ's name amen